All right, so last week I talked about uh, how to wholesale, how to do letters, how to do postcards, uh, talk to five sellers a day. And if you don't talk to five, say if you talk to two, uh, you got to mark it out to those uh, three other people, send them a letter, send them a postcard, and do that on uh, for rent by owner and for sale by owner on Zillow. Uh, I think we're going to get into, we might get into Craigslist. Only I'm not sure. But we'll get to it. All right. Uh, so, uh, I've been doing deals since 2009. I currently do two deals a month, make about 10,000 per deal. I do coaching. I won uh, teacher of the year in 2018. Uh, and I've won, uh, some awards with the RIA, uh, that I've got, I've got down here. Um, I think that's it. Oh, uh, amazing, beautiful, shy wife. I got two kids, Noah and Lincoln. You might hear them. Okay. All right. Uh, a connection of mine is bringing uh, uh, some people from New York. They're coming in on the 27th of this month. They have six million to spend, uh, and they're coming from New York, so it's New York money. So they might be willing to spend a little bit more than normal. So if you need to come up on those offers, you know you can come up above your uh, Mayo, uh, even if you're making like 2000, I'm sure we can sell this to them. Uh, and they're coming down on the 27th, then they'll be ready to, uh, sign on the dotted line. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, um, they're coming in at two in the afternoon, I'll meet them and then I'll be driving them around, uh, taking them to these deals and they're going to be ready to sign in on buy them and, and buy them. All right. Uh, and then how did I get this connection? So, uh, meetups like, uh, you know, I always go to meetups, uh, before the coronavirus happened, of course. And I would go to these meetups at restaurants, haves and wants, and I'd always be in there, uh, you know, with deals I'm selling. Uh, I was doing coaching. I'm still doing coaching. And, uh, you know, so I'd be offering that I'd have deals. I'd be in there, uh, networking with people. And when I was at Walmart, uh, we would talk to, uh, the other people there and you would say that, uh, it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, and we meant it very negatively. We meant it like really bad, like, um, as a bad way. Cause it was the brown nosers that would suck up to management and it was always the brown noser that would uh, you know, turn people in and it, they would know nothing. And we, we knew how to use the, uh, tells on We knew how to use the forklift, all that stuff we knew how to use. And we never got promoted even with the more work we do. It didn't matter how much work you did. It just mattered who you knew. And, uh, you know, if the boss liked you enough, they'd promote you. I mean, cause that's Walmart. It's all politics and it sucked. But now we say it to other investors and I say it, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And so from going to these events, this guy seeing me knowing that I'm, you know, a wholesaler, uh, he reached out to me in October last year to do a podcast on wholesaling because he's a uh, money lender. And so he's lending money and uh, he said, well, you know, I'm doing this podcast and recording it. It's coming out in a couple of, I think in a couple of months, for some reason he's waiting on to, to bring the podcast out. So, uh, I met him, did a podcast uh, about just general wholesaling, and uh, he gave me a call this morning and said, hey, I've got these investors coming in from New York. They're looking to spend a lot of money, uh, ready to buy, sign on the dotted line. So um, that's how I got that connection. So it was these little sort of blocks that are, you know, these uh, – uh, these little blocks that would fall over and knock the bigger block until eventually it got to this six million dollar block. Uh, so networking at some of those events, I didn't have anything to sell. 
I didn't have anything I was looking at to, uh, to buy. I didn't have any reason to be there. I would just go to those events, get my face out there, my name out there, talk to people, network with people. So uh, do that. And of course, be safe, wear a mask. Um, I'm high risk, so I don't go out to any of these events because uh, I don't want to take a chance. Um, and uh, that's how I got the connection. So yeah, if you get any deals, bring them to me. Uh, I'd like them to be in Atlanta if if you can, because uh, they're coming in at two. It's going to be rush hour, and I don't want to be driving out of Atlanta through these rush hour lanes. I think that's rush hour, right? At two to four. Uh, and you know, I want them to see as many houses because more houses they can see, the more they'll buy, the more money we'll make. All right. And of course we could split the profit on them. Uh, so I'm on TikTok. So if you, if you follow me, uh, you can follow me on TikTok at Mike, the wholesaler. Uh, so I put some funny, uh, stuff on there and, uh, you know, I don't do any dances or any booty shaking, but, uh, I do other stuff. I'm funny. So Skip Vault uh, has an account on there. They saw one of my videos, started following me, and uh, they reached out to me. And uh, they reached out to me about uh, skip tracing. So they do skip tracing, and uh, they want to see if I want to be an affiliate for them. I said, sure. Uh, I haven't set up the account yet. But it says uh, they say I'm going to make 40% commission on the first month, 20% commission on the second month. After that, I'm also going to get a discount on using them to skip trace for myself. So I will get paid from them because I'd be an affiliate. Uh, I have a link to post here. And let's see if I got that link. Let me. Paul's my share. Okay. And here is the link. If you want to get going and use. Okay. In the chat right here. Everybody. Okay, so there's that link. Uh, to it, resume share. Okay, I don't want y'all to see any of my passwords and stuff. Okay, so skip vault. Uh, and since this is a no selling environment, if you don't like me or if you just <laughs> don't want me to get any money, I mean, it's not like this is a big, I guess, uh, this isn't a real money maker for me. It was just like they offered it, so I took it, but um. If you want, you, I think you can take off the question mark PR equals Mike four one and then skip vault.com should just take you right to them. Um, I don't, oh, no, wait, yeah, I'm supposed to be an investor, uh, entrepreneur. So multiple streams of income. That's what this is. Multiple streams. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a list. And I'm going to take a list and I'm going to have me and some family members on this list and properties I've already done before so I can verify the phone numbers. And I know, oh, this is the right phone number. And I'm going to test, I'm going to skip trace that in batch, skip, uh, batch uh, driven in my CRM that skip traces would, it's basically batch uh, skip tracing. And then I'm also going to, going to skip that list in skip vault. And I'm going to see which ones get the uh, most number of correct phone numbers because that's what matters. All right. So if I have to spend and it's not about money, if I have to spend like, uh, you know, 50 bucks a skip, but if they can guarantee that I will actually get the seller or my money back, I'll pay that 50 bucks every time. So it's not about which one is cheaper or which one gets me more phone numbers. I had one where you could just plug in the house without even the seller's name and it would skip it. But the phone numbers were just trash. It was that uh, Max Maxwell skip genie or, or something. Uh, REI skip. It was just horrible. None of the numbers were right. 
I mean, it was ridiculous and it would only find three. Uh, but it would, it would tell you like IP address of the property, um, a whole bunch of extra information, bed, bath. Uh, it was just a shame. Uh, so it's the accuracy of the phone numbers that matter. So I'm going to test that out. I'm going to come back next week and let you know if skip vault is any good. Uh, and then tell you about their accurate numbers. All right. So you might notice that I'm not wearing an orange shirt. Uh, right now, which is weird because normally, you know, I like orange. I've got a little iPod, AirPod case in my phone case. Oh, it's like getting a little scratched up. But uh, this is 3M Marketing. Uh, and I don't know if you can see that, but 3M Marketing, they're on Facebook. They sent me, Marcus Merritt sent me as a client of theirs. They sent me some candy. They sent me this shirt. And then they sent me a card which I don't have right here. And then, of course, they sent me some business cards right here. And you can see that. Yeah, so I was like, man, that's good marketing. Sending me t shirt So I'm going to be wearing this around and, and do marketing for them. But uh, we can go to my... Let me see if I, I don't even know if I can go to my Facebook account. So come on. Let me see if it'll let me into my Facebook. I'll go to my Facebook page and y'all can take a look at my. Yeah. So I, I just can't post anything. All right. So here y'all can see this. Don't be giving my secrets away. Okay, so here's my page. Uh, Mike the Wholesaler, there's the events that I ran in Atlanta before the Rona. Uh, here's something I uploaded from TikTok. TikTok, this is all me. All right, so here we go. This is content from them. So they have manager access back into my stuff and they come on here and post these like, uh, I mean, he finds all, or his people find all these pictures and they put them on there. We buy your houses, sell your house if it's leaking, Merry Christmas, all this like branded stuff. Look at that guy. Uh, you can tell that was a long time ago. Okay. Here we go. Okay. All right. So that's 3M Marketing. Uh, thought that was cool. So the t-shirt, uh, I might buy a bunch of these t-shirts from like Teespring and just hand them out to friends of mine, like, or ship them to, Hey, what's your size? Let me send you a shirt and just have them mark it for me. Okay. So, uh, your team, your team. Uh, now a lot of people say you're real. You need to have a realtor on your team. You need to have a lawyer on your team. And you need to have other wholesalers uh, on your team and, or like and or a funding partner. Uh, so you don't need funding partner as is, you know, you're wholesaling. Um, you can buy a uh, proof of funds letter uh, or use a cash buyer's proof of funds letter uh, on their behalf uh, if you need to. Uh, just check with your lawyer. I'm not a lawyer or an attorney. Uh, check with your lawyer to make sure that uh, you have the documentation to allow you to do that. Uh, if you need a lawyer, you can go to that site. It's a 24-hour, uh, I think it's Legal Shield, uh, or you can get Legal Shield through the website, the uh, REI, the USA site. Uh, so the realtor, you're not actually having the realtor on your team here. Okay, so uh, what what a lot of people think, and I see a lot of these gurus say, is that they, uh, what they do is they say you got to have this realtor, you got to talk to them like you're you're doing deals already, and if you're not, it's going to be hard to sound like that, and you're not actually hiring the realtor on with you. The realtor is staying in their own area, they're staying in their own lane, and that realtor is, they are. They have to hang their badge with uh, a brokerage. So they're going to hang their badge there. They're going to do that. And then 
they're going to work for, with you on the side. So you're going to send them listings. They're going to pay you a hundred bucks per listing. You're going to pay them a hundred bucks per deal that they send you off market that you can then uh, wholesale. And then any, once you get enough money, you'll be able to include other realtors by paying them what their commission would have been on the deal or allowing them to just add that money on top of the deal to sell to their, uh, their buyers. So they would just add their commission on top. Uh, but you're not actually going to have a realtor like technically on your team. You're just going to have a realtor as a buddy and you can find these realtors uh, in the directory in REI USA. So uh, you, I think there's one that's just realtors or there should be a group. And then there's also a um, speed dating thing that you can get on and you can go in there and meet everybody in the room and say, Hey, I'm looking for a realtor uh, or I'm looking for a lawyer uh, or I'm looking for other wholesalers to network with. You want other wholesalers on your team. Uh, they want, you want buddies that are wholesalers because you want to, uh, if you have a deal you can't find a buyer on, or they have a uh, a buyer they can't find a deal for, you want to partner up with them and you want to split the profit with them. You do not want to add your money to them. You do not want to uh, add your money on top and then turn around and sell it to your people because they're gonna they might get that person's emails and they'll see oh you're selling the same deals as this other guy you just added some money on top and it kind of looks bad. So you want to get with them, split the profit. You get the assignment to the buyer, not paperwork, and you assign it to the buyer for whatever they're selling it for. And then uh, you put their signature on that assignment as well. doesn't matter who's on the purchase agreement. It matters who's on that assignment agreement. You take that assignment agreement, you send it to them. They send all of that, fax it, whatever, to the closing attorney. And then the closing happens. Whatever is on that assignment, if there's two people on there, they're going to split it 50-50. Okay? Now, uh, if there's three people, they're going to split it three ways. Okay? I would rather do that than the sign an agreement to where you're going to split the profit, a, a JV agreement. Because if they find their own buyer, you still get half the profit. So it's good for you, but it's not good for the person with the deal because if the person with the deal finds their own prop, uh, their own buyer, uh, they're not going to want to split it with you. And so then it's all this like, well, you signed an agreement. Uh, so I definitely, as the person with the property, wouldn't sign an agreement with somebody else. It, it just, it's so much easier uh, to just sign the assignment agreement. All right. So that's your team. Promise to me that you're going to talk to five souls a day. That's 35, uh, so y'all should have ma uh, marketed or called and spoke to 35 sellers. And uh, if you didn't, you should have mailed out to up to probably up to 35 sellers if you didn't talk to any. So uh, keep on that, five sellers a day. And again, if you go to the last video from last week, you will see that, uh, you know, how to do that on for rent by owner and for sale by owner on Zillow. So make an actual offer to a person truly interested in selling their house. Uh, send mail to any that you don't get to. If you talk to three sellers, uh, send mail out to two. Uh, set a task in Podio or Google Calendar or in your phone calendar to send mail again in 30 days and repeat forever. I would change that to 21 days. So 21 days, because if you mail out in 21 days, uh, you're gonna mail them in two and a half months, you're gonna have mailed them three times and your competition is going to have mailed them twice. Okay. So uh, every 21 days or every three weeks, so ways to generate a list. All right, so we've got some cheap and some costly. Driving for deals on your way to and from work. I think we talked about, did we talk about this last week? So driving for deals uh, to and from.
from on your way to work. Pause it and I will open up Google My Maps. My Maps. Figured out my computer is slow because Google Chrome does a lot of stuff in the background. Okay, so here we go. Google My Maps. And in My Maps, it's going to show how you can create maps in your, uh, for yourself. You just, you make them. Is it loading up? Oh, yeah. All right. So here is, uh, there's Bandit Sign. Let's go. So these are our maps that I have, and some of these have a lot, like uh, like these are all sellers. Some have sellers and buyers, uh, but we want this one. So you can actually upload a list by going to the layer and or import into the layer. So you can make add a layer, and then you can go to import, and you can upload a spreadsheet of buyers or sellers and you can color code them so you can see all the red is buyers all the green are sellers and you can see where all the buyers are and and target those areas where people are where houses are being sold for a lot and there a lot of them are being sold so quantity and uh profit or something you can go after uh, and then you can also look at like zip codes and stuff. Uh, but this is what we're going to use it for right now. So this is just a list I made up. And uh, it is, is it Google? It should be google.com slash my maps is what it should be. But you can Google it and uh, get to it there. Okay, so uh, let's say that A is my home. And then J is my work. So I'm gonna rename this work. And if I gotta stop somewhere, let's say Dragetta, it's E. Dragetta will be food, okay. And so, all right, let's say I want to add something to this. You can come up here and you can add a marker. And you, I should give you some crosshairs. Okay. That is weird. It's not giving me crosshairs. Uh, let's delete this layer. Is that as many as I can have in there? Uh, so there's properties, and then there's more properties. Okay, so these are va these were vacant uh, a couple years ago. So, so these aren't probably aren't vacant anymore. Uh, so why does it not let me? Yeah, see, I, oh, here we go, all right. So you click on the add marker, here we go, and I'm adding this to another layer. Uh, oh, it can't be in the driving layer, I bet. All right, so I can add this here, and then I can call that um, stop uh, two, or whatever, whatever I wanna call it, okay. All right, so here we go, and let's say these are neighborhoods that I want to go to, or these are foreclosures that I want to drive by. Uh, if these are areas and neighborhoods with a lot of houses, and you want to look in here and make sure that there's neighborhoods, and this is why you want to plan everything out in Google Street View. So, like, see, like these little neighborhoods, and and in here, and uh, over here. See, these are good areas. You don't want to go into areas like this because um, you don't want to waste your time, especially on the way to and from work, to go to the wrong places. 
All right, and then if we go to driving directions, so uh, you'll have to click up here and say add directions. And if you do, it will create a driving directions layer. And you'll then pick all the places to add to here. And so I think there's only like 12 different spots you can add to a driving directions. And so you'll add those to driving directions and then it'll put directions up like this. And then of course you should be able to move them. Let's see, got G is at the end. Let's move that up. Uh, F. Okay, I, I want at the end C. Why is C all the way down there? Oh, wait, wait, B. I want B at the end. There we go. All right, and so G to go after F. All right, okay. <laughs> so we're gonna get there. So what basically what I want to do is I want to make a route that's gonna be like this And not because right now it's got me going from H G and then uh, you know uh, to I and all this, this loopy stuff. So make sure you get it in the right area and um, And then when you do this in your account like see I'm here in my account right there when I log, when you log into your phone and you get onto Google Maps, uh, you will have this route in there under saved maps. And so you go to maps, you go to saved, and you're gonna have this in there, you're gonna hit uh, give me directions, and then it will immediately start routing you to the next spot. So if you're at home, let's say this is home, here is the next spot, which is gonna be B. It will then start routing you to B. Second you get to B, you get there, it'll say you've arrived, it'll route you to the next spot, which is E, okay? And then uh, after that, it'll route you to the next spot and then to the next spot and to the next spot. And uh, so that is how it works. Okay, so A, B. B, C, D, and then after D, we want H. How is that? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and you come back to I, J. There we go. All right, so that is the route, okay? And this way you get to just the neighborhoods that matter, and again, you can have uh, all trails, uh, which is a free app on your phone. You can, it, it's usually like records um, uh, like uh, walking in trails in the wilderness. It'll route your, your map the whole way there and you can start uh, driving for deals and tracking. So you go through all the roads in that neighborhood and you don't miss them. And then also you don't go down the same roads twice because in the neighborhood we'd be peeping through the blinds, like what's going on here? And uh, you know, they might call uh, the HOA on you and you don't want that. All right, so that is how to uh, go drive it for deals. And now, so when you go drive it for deals, you wanna again, uh, or wait, I'll, I'll get to that. I don't sell lists anymore. Uh, you can get a list from Deanna Britt, which is a vendor of the, of the REI USA. She's a vendor, uh, law clerk on demand. So you can uh, go to her and buy a list. You can buy like five different lists from her. So we talked about Zillow. Uh, I don't do deal machine anymore, but if you want to send me a deal, send me a deal. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll work it together. Uh, Craigslist. Do I have Craigslist up still? Let me see.
Okay, so I will open credit. Man, where did it go? All right, so you go to Craigslist, and then you go to real estate for sale. And then here we are. So this is what Craigslist looks like. We want a minimum of two bedroom, and we want one bath. You want there to actually be a house. There's no way to do anything with a one bed, one bath. Like nothing you're going to do with that. Uh, and I mean, you're obviously going to build on like, you're going to build on uh, another bedroom, two bedrooms, and you're going to build on a bath. And, but usually if you're going to build that on that neighborhood that that's in is all going to be uh, two ones. And so it's not going to make sense for you to just add a bedroom. It's just not going to do it. So you want a two one at least. Uh, and then you want to go down to housing type and you can't wholesale apartments. But you can do condos, cabins, duplexes, flats, houses, lofts, and townhomes. I wouldn't do manufactured, but you could. We do have, there is a super group, uh, which is also Mike, uh, and he does uh, mobile homes. So mobile home Mike, uh, that would be manufactured, uh, would be grouped in there with mobile homes. So get with uh, that guy. All right, so here we want to weed all these out. Lease to own or credit with a negative keyword. So negative credit. That one's, that one's going to go away. So this one is brand new. So comma minus brand. That. Now see that damn post the same one like three times. Okay, uh, handyman special. Well, that's what you want right there. This financing. So minus finan with a C. All right. My dyslexia always acts up. Okay, I did. I did. I did. All right. Beautiful. So minus B A U beautiful. That one goes away. So we're gonna do that. And then there's this with selling houses. This you want to keep looking at these and finding keywords in here to get these out. You want everything to go away, and you have a maximum of 15 keywords. So you're only gonna be able to put in uh, so much and stuff is always going to weed through the cracks because people are stupid. Like, like um, multi-tenant office building uh, and, and just weird stuff. So you want something like with no pictures or it looks like, I don't know, coming soon. Uh, something like this. Oh, and then the biggest one you want to get rid of all of the wholesalers is minus ARV because that's what we put in. All right, and, and I'll see if you get, yeah, so some of them went away. This cute house. The worst of picture, those are the ones you want. Okay, like that, I'm seeking through bedroom. Love is caring for each other even when you're angry. That's a weird way to write, and they're selling it for 300. Okay, whatever works. All right, so you can see the map. And then you're supposed to scroll down here and get to uh, RSS feed. It's supposed to be down here in the corner, but it's not. So uh, if you're in Podio, you can take this link up here and you put that link into Podio in the integration and it will update there. If not, log into this account and you wanna save this search. And then if anything updates in here, if anything gets added that meets this criteria, uh, they're going to send it to you. So this is sort of your, your kingpin, your farm area. This is creating your farm area, just like we did in for sale by owner and for rent by owner in Zillow. You're making your farm area here in Craigslist. So any property that's going to be added that meets your criteria, 
is going to show up and they're going to send it to you. So that is Craigslist. All right, so now you got a list in your pocket right now. Uh, you may be watching it uh, on, on your, your free pocket list. Wow. Uh, but it's your phone. So go into your phone, and so I got a Mac and an iPhone, so it links up. But I can bring all my contacts in here, and I can copy them into a spreadsheet. So if you can't do that, um, uh, somehow uh, keep track of them. If they're in your phone, you can't get them out of your phone, categorize them A to Z. And I've got a big uh, calendar on my desk. Uh, desk calendar and so you go through that list call on a to z and I, the only people i would exclude from this is i would say not to call the brown others or the people like at your current job that you think are going to go tell the boss because uh, that would be bad and um don't tell them but everybody else give them a call you know shoot the crap talk with them catch up oh where you been Oh, you still at uh, you know, uh, at Walmart? No, no, no. I'm a manager at Pizza Hut now. I'm moving up. You're like, oh man, you at the big time now? Yeah, I got got two more kids. Oh yeah, you can get that big stimulus check, and just shoot it up with them. Uh, you know, cause it's, you you want to see where they're at. You know, you want to, and then of course you want to judge like you know, where you're at to where they are. You want to be like further along than they are. So there's that. Uh, and then but. Uh, and then at some point you want to say, well, hey, I got this buddy. He's buying houses. Now, this buddy can be me. It can be your cash buyer. It can be these guys coming in with six million. Uh, it, it just as long as it's not you. OK. And the reason for that is that uh, if you're still at a job or these are people that know you personally and they're like, well, where'd you get all this money from? You know, or, oh, Mike, how you buying my house? You work at Walmart. Management would bring me in when I would have like a, a magnet on my car that say we buy houses. They'd be like, how you buying houses, Mike? We just pulled up your paycheck. You don't make enough to be buying houses. And I'd be like, man, well, that's rude. Like, what y'all care about what's on my car? Uh, so uh, mention that it's somebody else. He's got a bunch of cash. He's asking me to go find it. So, uh, you know. Or you or anybody else you know wanting to sell a house, let me know. And then tell them if you see a house that looks vacant or it looks like they might want to sell, send me the address. Let me know. And if you see any houses again being torn down, any houses being built up, let me know of that as well. So then you further put out your little feelers, your little sleeper network of uh, people telling you what's moving and shaking excuse me, in, in your market, in your area. All right. And then, of course, it also turns them on to if they're around anybody that wants to sell their house, they're going to think of you. All right. I don't do deal machine anymore. Uh, but if you see a deal and take a picture, you can just text it to me. Uh, pull this list as a realtor. Uh, you can get expired uh, listings from a realtor. I think you can. If there's a realtor in a group, you can network with them and see if they could get you a list like this. Or you can get uh, Mojo Dialer. And Mojo Dialer has, uh, you can pay like 20 bucks extra and it'll give you a list of expireds uh, in, in a zip code. So that's really good. Uh, and you can get a realtor to, or you can get your own realtor's license and pull it for you. Uh, let's see, buy list, pocket list. Mojo Dialer, all right, and then the best marketing strategies for you. Uh, introvert, I'd say ringless voicemails are good. Now, ringless voicemails, uh, there's a lot of stuff surrounding this. So there's a guy selling courses now where you can profit off people sending you a ringless voicemail. So uh, what it is, is they, they find you from sending them the ringless voicemail. Each one that they send uh, is a $500 fine that you get. And 
uh, they can put a lien on any property that you own and they put that lien on your property and when the property sells they have to satisfy that lien so they send a check to the to whoever uh got the ringless voicemails in the mail and he sells a course on how to do that so be very wary of ringless voicemails because the way the law is written and these people in the government that they're getting but the way the law is written ringless voicemails are getting lumped in with robocalls just because the lawmakers don't uh, care to know the difference, and uh, they don't, because they're all they're old people. They're old. That's it. Uh, extrovert, you can go door knocking. So when you go driving for deals, I don't mean door knocking like go through every house in that neighborhood and knock on the door. I mean when you go driving for deals, you see a vacant property, get out, park park the car, and then get out. All right, I say it that way. Walk up to the house and knock on the door verify this is to verify that it's vacant and if it is good if it's not say hey just want to see if you might thought about selling your house if it is vacant put a uh, post-it note on there and you can get a book that's got them already written on there you can get a stamp that's handwritten that says hey i want to buy your house stamp that on there with your phone number uh, and then what you want to do is go to all the neighbors' houses, the two on either side of them, and then the three on the other uh, side of the road, and say, hey, you know this house over here? And when you go and you knock on that door, especially if you're tall, you knock on the door or you ring the doorbell, you go all the way down the stairs, you take your feet and you point them uh, away from the door and, and the person, and then you look away too, and you know, it, it's almost like you pretend that they're a bear and they're threatening. You want to see them as non-threatening because you are an outside person coming in and uh, you want them to feel like they are the dominant one <clears throat> uh, in this situation because you're coming to somebody's house. They don't know you. You don't know them. And, and so you sort of want to look at them and say, well, you know anything about this house over here? You think they might want to sell like uh you know i buy houses you know, i pay cash i'm just wanting to buy this house would you know the owner or maybe you know their cell phone or where they might be and uh they might give you the phone number because they'll, be, they'll throw jim under the bus dude jim ain't mowed that lawn in like three years you can get him out of kids live in there they'd be like yeah, yeah yeah and he's got liens on it and he's got this and that and he's got gambling debt so yeah you can wring him dry they just want that house, that lawn mowed. They want it all fixed up. They want it not being an eyesore. <clears throat> mass texting. You can do mass texting in batch driven. And you can do that mass texting in REI Simple, although it's a lot of clicking. Uh, and then there's a couple other sites that can do it like Sly Text or Sly Message. Get which one it's one of those sly uh and oh and then uh i believe it is a vendor of the set of the usa rei usa uh, is a has a vendor or a uh a coupon for you a coupon code with using call fire and that's how stacy does the the mass texting is with call fire so they're really good and you'll get a discount <clears throat> So the mass texting, and that's introvert, and so you can get that conversation started. If you wanna go from mass texting to calling them, ask. Don't just give them a call when they respond to you, because my wife will get a text, or she'll text her best friend that she knows personally and talks to, and that person will call her back, and she'll just <gasps> place the phone down and just, and it just, duh, 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 duh. I'm like, are you going to pick it up? She'll be like, I don't have enough, you know, uh, mental capacity for that. And I'm like, what? And I was like, what if the sellers have that too? And then also the seller doesn't know me. Seller doesn't know who I am. So it's doubled, quadrupled up. So that's where mass texting comes in is you're getting to these introverts that don't want to pick up the phone and, and, and talk to people. So cold calling is good, but when you cold call people, uh, you miss out on those introverts because they're like, I don't know that person. I don't know that number.
cold calling, you can use mojocells.com, Mojo Dialer. If you're on Podio, you can use smartphone, which is no A, so S M R T. And it's smartphone, and that works exclusively with Podio. And it links up. You can't do mass texting, but it is a multi ring dialer. <clears throat> and it will call like three numbers at once. If one picks up, it'll hang up on the other two. You'll talk to them. And with Mojo, yeah, here. So you click on the dialer and you come in and you click on a list like here and oh it's one to the image all right so you have a list uh you can select like appointment set whatever you have the people here it will tell it will look at the property address and then it'll look at the owner address and it'll tell you uh whether or not it's absentee owner owner occupant whatever and you can have scripts in here to where it's, am I talking to owner occupant or am I talking to uh, somebody else? You can have dynamic scripts in here where it will, in the scripts, it'll say, hey, we're interested in buying this property. It will input that property into the actual script so you don't have to like, you know, use your eyes and, and reference, uh, which helps. And it'll even put their name and their information in there and fill it in. And then when you're in the call, there will be a button. I don't know if my uh, acquisition uh, person is making calls right now or I'd open up the power dialer. But when you're in there and you make the call, you can set it to appointment set, there's a dead lead, follow up with them, hot lead, uninterested, trash. You can uh, hit a button to send a pre recorded, excuse me, voicemail. You can send an, a pre written email. You can send a pre typed out uh, text immediately as they don't pick up. You can pay for more line dialers. So it's a one dialer, but you can add in the second, third, and I think a fourth uh, dialer in there. And then of course it works with Zapier. So it'll transfer everything to Podio. Once you hit, uh, this is a hot lead or it's in follow-up. Uh, you can upload your list here and call them. I mean, it is amazing. It's 97 a month. And uh, you can pay like 20 bucks and get extra lists from the MLS. And you can pay 20 bucks and record all your calls. And then you can go back and listen to them. Or in this case, I can listen to my cold callers call. And uh, I meet with them every Friday before this call at five. And we go over like all those calls and stuff. So that's mojo cold calling. There is. Um, I think is there another kind of dialer that you could use um, you can use Google Voice on your phone but typing in all those little numbers is going to get old uh, so yeah mail to a web form so you can as an introvert you can put a web form from your podio setup and into a mail piece and you can say we'll go to Mike sells houses or Mike buys houses uh, dot com and then just link that uh, redirect that website through your provider to your Podio web form and they'll go right to web form and put in their information. Uh, obviously there's mail to your phone uh, or to a batch driven phone number or your CRM phone number which is what I would do. And then Facebook ads. So Facebook removed the ability a while ago to uh, not upload a list. You used to be able to upload a list of people from a spreadsheet and you would target them if they had a Facebook account tied to the email that you, you obviously skip trace them first and put them in there where their phone number matches up, it would then show them ads. And I think people abused it and started saying, well, we want to buy your property at 123 Main Street, Sarah. And Sarah was just like, that's creepy. So now it's got to be a lookalike audience. So when you upload a list, it'll pick an audience that looks just like them. And there's no guarantee that that lookalike audience owns property. So uh, you got to be sure that, uh, you know, 
they own property. So I don't know about Facebook ads anymore. You could do, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. You can go live on social media. So let me look at my social media accounts. So you can go live. I can't go live on Facebook, but uh, you can go live on Facebook. Uh, I'm in 24 hour jail for sharing a meme that I found on Facebook, uh, which is awesome. So uh, you can go live on Facebook. Uh, Clubhouse isn't going to be sellers and it's invite only. And it's only on iPhones, so that's going to exclude a bunch of people. But I would go live on Facebook. Can you go live on Snapchat or Twitter? Yeah, so Facebook. I wouldn't do Instagram because Instagram, um, I mean, they're ridiculous. They own your information, and they can sell your pictures. And they can even, they even get uh, ownership of your username as a website. So if you have your username as a website, they own it. I'm like, that's insane. Uh, so yeah, you can go live. Oh, and then on TikTok, you can go live if you have a thousand members. Uh, which reminds me, I have a TikTok, Mike the Wholesaler, that I put a lot of good information and some funny dancing and, and music and memes and stuff on there. So you can go follow me on TikTok, Mike the Wholesaler. And hopefully I can go live once I get a, a thousand followers. But you want to go live, you want to put out videos, um, telling people, let me know how I can help you. Um, just looking to help y'all. Here's the information on the moratorium. All that stuff uh, is on there. And uh, wait a second, that reminds me. This. Well, I'll get to that next week. Okay, so uh, message bots. I've got a message bot. It's ninety-seven a month. Uh, you can get a message bot. I think you can build one yourself on. I think it's called Moby. Uh, Moby dot com. Uh, but it's a message bot. I had a realtor build it for me, and uh, it's on our servers. And I've programmed the questions in there to be as uh, a cash buyer and a reference um zillow so if you know how to do that you could you could pay somebody on fiverr to build one for you uh or if you know somebody that's into that kind of stuff they can build it for you uh it's really not that hard all right so now that you uh have addresses you got skip trace i will get into this later i think we'll end it here and we'll go to questions yeah okay so do we have any questions q a Nope, no questions. Uh, chat, okay. Oh, here we go. In the chat, all right. So do buyers want or expect a full house inspection versus a real estate inspection performed by an inspection company? Uh, can you recommend a company that works with wholesalers? So as a wholesaler, uh, you could pay for an inspection, but most of these houses that you're gonna go to uh, the reason you pay for an inspection is because the house looks kind of nice and it's hard to find these problems. And so you pay for that inspection because the inspector is going to know, notice these things. Like he's going to look in these places you wouldn't normally look. Cause you look at it, you're like, Oh, it looks fine. But when you get into a house and it's missing the whole bottom floor and you can see directly into the basement uh, or, or you could see directly into the second floor from the first floor, um, or, or uh, there's no walls, it's all frame, uh, the air condition is ripped out or all the tile is gone, uh, you're going to know what, what you can do your own inspections at that point. Uh, and then the cash buyer is going to do a, a, an inspection, but it's going to be them walking. They want to see the property. So they're going to show up. They might bring their own inspector at, uh, or their contractor. And they're going to come look at the property and, and see what work they kind of do. You might give them pictures ahead of time. Uh, they might buy sight unseen. So you'll just send them pictures or a video and they might buy it just on those pictures. Uh, you could get a contractor to go to the property and look at it and give you a quote. And then you could pass that quote along to the buyer. Uh, but you're not going to, there's no traditional, uh, home inspector that's going to come and, and look at your property and uh, 
you know, be like, uh, well, you know, the all the coppers ripped out. Uh, so I'd say that's a thing. Um, the, and plus the home inspector is really a, a, a thing to give to the seller to say, hey, these things need to be fixed before I buy it. And when you're buying houses as is, as a wholesaler, that's not something you want to do. You don't want to come back to the seller and be like, hey, you need to fix this and this and this. The fact that you can buy as is and they don't need to do anything or if they're doing work and they can stop because you're buying it, it's a plus. They're going to be like, oh, I don't have to sweep. I don't have to vacuum. I don't have to change this or install that or pay any more for it. You just buy it. Great. Uh, and believe me, you have to remind people that you buy as is because they'll be like, well, this other guy is buying it and he's making me uh, ask me to install a fridge. And I was like, what? Like, I'll just buy it just like it is now. I'll put the fridge in. Like, you're crazy. Uh, so you do not need a full or uh, a house inspection uh, or a traditional real estate uh, home inspection. If you do, if you're buying a sort of like a nice house, and you can't really tell, you might get one uh, just to, you know, or if you're buying it for yourself, you might want to get one. I would talk to, uh, I don't know if you can still get to Pete, but Stacy Rossetti is married to Pete Rossetti. And he had a company called Pete's Home Inspections and he sold that. So you might uh, just look up Pete's Home Inspections. I doubt they would change the name. That's sort of taboo. Uh, but um, Pete's Home Inspections would be a good one uh, to look up because it was such a good company. It was ran so well that Pete was just able to sell it to somebody. Somebody wanted to buy it from him. So I would say that's a good uh, home inspector. Do you, uh, do you have any deals or are you marketing to any lists of sellers? And I think my kids open the door and uh, my wife headed out and I think my kids have opened the door and so you can hear their their show playing. So yeah, it's Noah and Lincoln and let me see, why don't I have pictures in this, in these slides? Here we go. This is it, all right, here we go. All right, man. So I had to get rid of Chrome because it was slowing my computer down. Uh, there we go. And uh, okay. All right. So here we go. Here it is. There's Noah. There's Lincoln. There they are again. That's me. Noah and Lincoln. Noah is seven and Lincoln is five. And I'm old. And that's that. Uh, so I think that's it. Uh, if there's no more questions, I'll end it here. And um, don't forget to talk to five cells a day. Oh, uh, I'm just starting out. How do I determine the cost of repairs in the ARV? Okay. So we want to go to Zillow. So Privy is, I think, a vendor of the REI USA, and uh, they work with Zapier, which will put ARVs on all your stuff in uh, Podio if you have it. But this is what I do most of the time. So here is Zillow and I can come here and click for sale and you want, uh, well, not for sale. We want sold, which is yellow. And then we want whatever your house is. So say, oh man, don't be freezing on me now. Okay, there we go. So let's say uh, we want to go to sold in the last, let's do 30 days. Okay. 
So here's a good area. Let's say I have a house right here on Jefferson Avenue. Okay. And I look here, they've got a 2 1 that sold for 200,000. We've got a 4 2 for 300. We've got a 3 2 for 300. And we got a 2 2 for 216. So let's say we got a two, uh, let's say we got a two bed, two bath. So we would have this 200 and that 200. And was that a four two and a four two? Okay. So if I go back 90 days, okay, good. All right, so uh, if we have a two two, let's see. Uh, there's a two, two for one ninety and two, two for 200, a two, two for 200. So you've got a two, 200, two sixteen and one ninety. So I would say the ARV going with the lowest one here is one ninety two as the ARV of a house if you had a house here. So that's how you determine the ARV. You look at the houses that sold around it. Uh, and so we come up with 92. The reason I picked 92 instead of doing the average between 216 and 210 is I picked the lowest. Because when you get a buyer here on, on, on this house in Jefferson Avenue, that buyer is gonna say, well, this house over here on Sylvian Trace uh, sold for 192. That one sold for 192, so that's what I'm gonna sell it for. I'm not gonna make a whole lot of profit on it. So if you bake in that it's gonna sell at 192 and there's enough profit in it, it's definitely gonna sell at 210 or 216. Now you could come in here and say, well, hey, if they added a bed, bedroom and a bathroom and made it a 3-2 and included that price, uh, excuse me, into the repairs, it'd be 317. And then 305 and then 250, 259, and 220. So where? Oh, 22. Okay. So I would say like 259. Yeah, 259 would be your ARV. So they add in a bedroom, bathroom. And it increases the ARV by 60, 70, about 70,000. So that might be worth it. Uh, and so that's how you determine the ARV. The cost of repairs, Stacy said that the cost of repairs is usually like 60,000 base. Uh, and if you think it's gonna be more, what you could do is take everything is like 6,000 or 5,000. And uh, I do five because math sucks. Uh, so if it needs a new roof, that's five uh, or 10, just to keep it out of the numbers right. So 10, if it needs a new roof, uh, if it needs a new cabinets, that's five. It needs new appliances, that's five. It needs new tile throughout the upstairs, that's five. It needs new tile or a tile. It needs new hardwood upstairs, it needs new hardwood downstairs, that's five. And you just add all that up. What I do is I take the square feet and I times the square feet uh, by 60 bucks. And so the bigger the house, the, the more the ARV, and then you subtract that uh, cost of repairs uh, from 60% of the ARV. So you take 60% of the ARV and you take that number, you subtract the repairs. And then from there you subtract your fee, which should be at least 10,000. And then, uh, and then from there, that is your mayo, your maximum allowable offer. So, for example, if we had uh, 192 was the ARV on on this example house. One ninety two thousand uh, times. 60% is 115. And let's say, oh, man. 
man. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll save the air. Uh, I'll take off 15,000. 15,000 for repairs comes down to 100,200. Whoa. All right. Like, slow it down, dude. Uh, so we're at 100,200 minus 10,000 for our your wholesale assignment fee. 90,200 is going to be your mayo. And when you uh, give your offer to the seller, you want to make it a weird number. So you could say you could times that by uh, point. Nine, 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 nine. And you get 90,199. And so you tell the seller, hey, uh, you know, I can come in and get this for like nine, 90,199. Some weird number. Make it look like you guys said, you don't just want to shoot out like a, I'll give you 50,000 or 90,000 for it. Because they're going to think you're just giving them a low ball offer. So does that answer your question? And uh, do you have any other questions? It looks like the whole area is, okay, cool, cool, cool. Looks like the whole area is like all over the place. They got two ones, three twos, four twos, five two. I mean, just all over the place, yeah. And then they've got some sort of school like in the subdivision. City folk are weird, y'all. Okay, and then they got a park a whole government building over there all right okay so that's it i think we'll come in next week and next week you should be calling five sales a day so you should have 35 leads or uh, you should be mailing out to uh those people and don't forget to be setting it in there when you mail out to them to come back in three weeks and mail out to them again All right. Oh, and then uh, join my Facebook group, The Wealth University, if you want. And I will see you next Friday. All right. And then you should be able to get this recording uh, um, either tonight or tomorrow. All right. And uh, let me think, is there anything else? Um uh yeah all right so i'll see y'all next week